everybody. Thanks for joining me for another one-man review. Today I'll be looking at But Is It Comicot? Uh, giant size annual number three. This is out from Domino Books. I ordered something from Domino uh, and Austin English at Domino was kind enough to send on a couple other things, this being one of them. This is cool. This is like a little newsprint magazine, uh, eight bucks. It's full of interviews with all kinds of interesting um, like indie underground artists. The covers by Zach Sally, which is really cool. I didn't read all the interviews because I'm I'm just way too busy right now to to take the time to do that. But they look really interesting. I glanced at little bits of them. Um, this is the kind of thing that for people who really love comics, like a magazine like this, is awesome. Just all kinds of interviews, little examples of artwork. There was definitely um, a couple like like this one with Mary Fleener. I I didn't read the whole thing. I like dipped in here and there and you know read a couple questions. Um, but the most important thing is I really like the art, and so I went and threw a couple Mary Fleener books on my list on Amazon. But, you know, can't order them yet, but um, we'll get around to it eventually. So that is really cool because it's like, even though there's none of the comics in there, it's still exposure to an artist that I was able to look up. Um, and you can see this is a pretty good long interview, this, this first one. So it's a really cool magazine. It also has a fair amount of comics in it. Uh, and I did read those, because I do have time to read those. This first one uh, by Matthew Thurber, this is a memoir comic. So this is, you know, the kind of thing I don't like. It's a cartoonist talking about being a cartoonist in a diary form. It's just personally, I don't like those kinds of things. But it's very well done. It's well cartooned and it's well written. I, I appreciate that it's um, it doesn't have exposition everywhere. It's just dialogue. So for this genre of comic, like that makes it much more approachable to me because then I can just go into it like I'm reading a story um, when the author's sitting there like telling me and then I went this and did this and that like it, it gets too much like I know it's someone's personal life. Um, this I can at least pretend it's a story. But the other thing that goes on in this is it's about them going to SPX. And so it's just very like name droppy. Oh, it was Jess Gable was there. And, it's it's one of those things of like cartoonists don't know anything else other than being a cartoonist and as a cartoonist myself it's not really compelling to read about it because it's just like okay you know I know what it is to go to a convention okay I know what it is to go with friends and hang out and do some drawing whatever um, one thing I do like about it is that because it, it, it does have this diaristic element to it there will be times where I'll just switch it's like okay this is how far it took me to tell the story and then I'll tell another one so there's some sense of this being just a really ongoing thing. And on the last page, uh, Thurber just leaves some panels empty. And I get the sense that, like, next time something interesting happens, I'll just start drawing in there. I mean, maybe that's incorrect. Somewhere else in the story, they're talking about a cartoonist who just uh, left the page empty. They just gave up. Um, and so I think that's a callback to that as well. Like, oh, I like that idea. I could use that, you know. So that that's an interesting way. And then you have a real cool pinup here. I don't know who it's by. I'm uh, I'm assuming by Victor Cairo is the signature. But there's a lot of other writing on here. So I don't know. Um, some more articles, which are cool. Uh, Doug Allen interview. And again, pretty extensive interview. Then we have another comic here that it claims to be uh autobiographical it says this began at 3 28 a.m september 14th 2020 but the story in this is like if this is autobiographical then this is like the type of story i want to hear because it's an intense story if it's not and they're just claiming that that's, that's interesting but to me again with the lack of um exposition i can at least imagine that it's a made-up story and in this case if it is a real story like i said this is basically the author, uh, David King, saying that on September 14th, 2020, he had an episode of amnesia, it looks like, where he just shows up on Skid Row and it's like, hey, you, you left the house and somehow you got shaved and, um, you know, he has no idea how he wound up where he wound up looking like how he looks. And so that's an interesting story. And I, I really enjoy the cartooning in it as well. So that one was cool. Uh, then you have a, inter a conversation with Dylan Williams and Jason T. Miles. Some more articles in here. We'll just go ahead and skip. Oh, uh, a talk with John Porcelino, which is cool. 
I dipped into that one here and there. Um, this is by Andrea Look, The Nightlife. I really like the art in this one. The I don't remember much about the story. The story was a little obtuse for me. Love this drawing right here with that puffy jacket. Kind of like some Dave McKean abstraction on there. Um, so I really like the art in that one. Then was super excited and did read this whole thing to see an interview with uh, our buddy Everett Glenn. Uh, this is, I think... Oh, when was this interview conducted? It doesn't say. Um, I think this is before we talked to Everett. I'm not sure. This looks like this was conducted after uns the first Unsmooth came out. And it, it was just kind of funny to, to, to me to get a sense of how um, his interview personality has changed since we talked to him about a year ago or so. Uh, so that was fun. I really love Everett's work and any anything that, that with him involved in it. I'm into it. Um, here's another article. Oh no, this is just a... Oh, this is an interview. I don't know, I didn't read that one. Um, and then we have this Tintin parody. It's cool to see in color too in the book, but Tintin and the metallic dildos. And they're talking about Jeff Koon's balloon paintings, which is really, really funny to me. But a, a pretty good mimic of uh, Hergé's style. A little, little different, a little more cartoony, but picking up on some fun things like walking along the panel borders and stuff like that. I actually really like the cartooning in here better than hair shape because it's a little more loose and alive. And it's got a little bit more of like Sergio Aragonas in it or something. Uh, but this is a funny story, just like making fun of the art world. So I quite enjoyed that. And it is also making fun of like QAnon and Pizzagate and all this type of stuff. I don't know... Uh, where the author comes down on that kind of stuff because there there is like Hillary Clinton and uh, the guy that owns the pizza store there like eating pizza off a cage full of babies um, so I don't know if they're making fun of it or if they believe it. it seems to be kind of in the middle this looks like Bill Gates with a big old 5G needle here um, but I really enjoyed that and then there's there's some advertisements for some books here. So I thought this was a really, really cool magazine. I wish I had time to, get, to dig in more to the interviews, but people who really like that kind of format with some comics and some inter interviews, this is a really, really good magazine. So I would definitely check this out. But Is It Comic Art by Domino Books. I'll make sure that we've got a link that you can go follow to that so you can support it. If you enjoy what we're doing and you want to support us, the best ways are through Patreon. We always really appreciate the support there. That helps us buy the books we review. And then um, the most important thing is supporting what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll take a look at a couple of books that you can get from Living the Line now. Plaza by Yokoyama Uichi. Uh, this is translated by Ryan Holmberg and is a very large for a manga. So that's a really cool feature of this book, this standard manga size. And it, it, this is just a 200 some odd page um, representation of what Yokoyama Yuichi thinks of the carnival parade. And he's just made this like relentlessly loud and rhythmic book that pushes all kinds of amazing boundaries of what comics and manga are. And we could not recommend this book more. Centralia is an awesome, gorgeous uh, comic by Rising Dutch Star. Neil Vanapete. This is his first work. It's a really great sci-fi story. There's a world in the future where the sun has gotten so hot that people can't be on the ground, uh, so they have to run around. There's a lot of conceits that go with that. You know, what is a world that that looks like? Um, and I think you can see by the art that Sean's description of this book as like a Moebius for young adults. A YA Moebius is a really great description of this really gorgeous and like wild, wacky, fun book. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. 